All right, everybody, we are going to go through the advanced study assignment for the standardization of a basic solution and determination of equivalent mass, uh, which is kind of a fancy way to say that we're going to find the molar mass of an unknown acid using this titration experiment. All right, so our first question here is, we're given uh, a 7.2 milliliter aliquot of some six molar sodium hydroxide, and we're diluting it to a total volume of 400 milliliters. And we wanna know what the molarity of the resulting solution is, okay? So to find out molarity, we need to know the moles and we need to know the volume in liters, the total volume in liters. So part A is asking us to find the moles of the sodium hydroxide Okay, so we're going to use equation one. And remember that this volume here has to be in liters, okay? And we're specifically looking for the moles of the sodium hydroxide here. So we have the molarity of the sodium hydroxide and we have the volume of the sodium hydroxide. Those are the two values that we need to multiply in order to find the moles present of sodium hydroxide. Okay, once we have the moles, then we can find the molarity, right? Because we know the mole value of the sodium hydroxide and we know the final volume. That final volume is 400 milliliters and we are going to, to convert it into liters before we do our calculation. Notice that our answer here is to two significant figures because we are limited by the significant figures in our mole calculation for sodium hydroxide. Now our next question kind of goes one step further because now we're actually going to do a titration. Okay, so we've used um, a certain amount of sodium hydroxide in order to fully titrate a sample of known hydrochloric acid solution. Okay, and we're going to use this information to find the molarity of our unknown sodium hydroxide. So if you have read your procedure for the lab, which everyone should have up to this point, then you know that the first part of the experiment is to standardize a sodium hydroxide solution. So this is the type of calculation that you would use to standardize that solution, right? <clears throat> so the first thing we have to do is we have to note the value of the molarity of hydrogen ions in our HCl solution. Well, how do we know the hydrogen ions? So remember, the hydrogen ions are going to be what reacts with the hydroxide ions to neutralize them, you know, to neutralize in that titration. So here we'll remind ourselves that HCl fully ionizes into hydrogen ions and chloride ions in a one-to-one -one ratio. So whatever the value of my HCl molarity is, that is going to be the same volume of my hydrogen ions, all right? Here you see that one-to-one -one ratio. Okay, the second question is find the molarity of the OH minus in the NaOH solution. And they gave you equation three here, okay? Now, the reason equation three works is because of that definition that we hear repeatedly, molarity times volume equals moles, all right? And in a, an acid-base titration where you have uh, a strong acid and a strong base, you know, your, your H plus and your OH minus is going to completely react with one another. So at the end point of our titration here, or at the, when you see that color change, what you should be able to put together is that the moles of the hydrogen ions are going to be equal to the moles of hydroxide ions at that point. Okay, and that's what's represented here in equation three, because molarity times volume equals moles. So what this is saying is that when you see that color change, all right, your moles of acid are going to equal the moles of your base, all right? And there's a special term for that that's called the equivalence point, all right? 
So we're going to be able to use this equation to figure out what the molarity of our hydroxide ion is, right? Because we know all the other values here. We found them throughout the experiment. So we can rearrange this equation and solve for our hydroxide ion. Okay, and you'll notice here that the molarity of the hydroxide ion will be limited in significant figures to three because the molarity value for our hydrogen ion was also three significant figures. Okay, now we need to figure out what the molarity of the NaOH itself was from that hydroxide ion. Again, we see that the breakup here, if you have NaOH, you have Na plus, NOH minus, that's a one to one ratio. So if we have 0.0944 molar OH with that one to one ratio, that we also have 0.0944 molar NaOH. And now our last question mimics the actual point of this lab, right? The, the, the unknown part of it where we're given this sample of acid. We don't know what the acid is. They just told us that it's a monoprotic acid um, and they want us to find the molar mass of it, all right? It's like, that's, this is the big mystery that we're supposed to be solving for the day. Okay, so they give us the mass value for the unknown acid. They give us the volume and the molarity of the NaOH, I mean, Obviously, it's the same molarity that we had for the last part. Um, and what we have over here, there are 0.32 milliliters of the 0 0.0997 molar HCl used for back titration. Okay, if you have a back titration included in your experiment, all that means is that you went past the endpoint of your original titration, meaning you added too much of the titrant. Um, and you are going to basically go back and fix it, okay? You can fix it for every titration that we do, but um, in this case, we have the ability to add more HCl to our mixture um, to kind of cancel out any error that we had uh, as far as over titration goes. But we just have to keep track of the volume of the HCl that we've added so that we don't count it towards the hydrogen ions that just come from that solid acid sample that we started with. Okay, so the first question here would be how many moles of OH minus did we use in the entire titration? Okay, to find the moles, um, we're just going to do a molarity times volume calculation. Okay, and remember that at your equivalence point, the moles of your hydrogen ion will equal the moles of your hydroxide ion, all right? So we're finding the moles of the hydroxide ion here because we're gonna use that and relate it to the moles of the hydrogen ion. Um, but first we need to take this into account, which is the moles of the H plus that we added from the HCl during our back titration. So to figure out that mole calculation, we're gonna do molarity times volume. And you, you're gonna notice that in both of these calculations, I left this in decimal form. And that is because the next step involves subtraction. And when you are subtracting, um, you have to count decimal places to keep track of your significant figures. Um, so you can't have these two answers in terms of different uh, exponents in scientific notation and subtract them and still keep track of your of your decimal places. That doesn't work. Um, so you either have to have them, you have to have everything in the, with the, with the same exponent, okay? It's like making everything the same unit before you do a calculation. That's kind of what this is. So you can make everything the same exponent or you can leave everything in decimal form and just count the decimal places uh, which is what I do because I find that there's less error that way. Um, and then we can move on to this next step, which is how many moles of H plus are there in the solid acid? Okay, so the moles of H plus from the solid acid, that's going to be all of the OH, right, in the solution, minus the H plus that we added from that HCl for the back titration. 
Okay, so it's the OH minus, which is here, minus the back titration, which is here. So you see when I do my subtraction now, I can actually count the decimal places. And I have five decimal places and I'm subtracting six decimal places from it. So my answer is going to have five decimal places. And now we can take that number because I don't particularly like leaving stuff in decimal places. I can take that number and now I can turn it into nice, clean, scientific notation. Okay, and this is the moles of the H plus that are from our solid acid. Okay, and now we want to know what the molar mass of the unknown acid is. To find the molar mass, we're just going to take the, the grams and divide it by the moles, right? Because the definition of molar mass is grams over moles. And we can do this here because we're assuming that this is a monoprotic acid, as your lab manual said, which means that there would be one mole of H plus for every one mole of complete whole unionized acid. <laughs> Um, so that because there's a one-to-one -one ratio between those, we can use the moles of the H plus that we found as a representation of the moles of the acid when we're looking at the molar mass. So we take this original mass value, we divide it by the moles of the hydrogen ion that we found, and we get a molar mass. We get a molar mass of three significant figures because we're limited here by the moles of hydrogen ion that we were calculating before. Uh, and this would be our final answer. Um, another good question that could stem from this is if we asked you, if we kind of gave you a list of acids and asked you to be to identify which acid your unknown was based on that list because you could look at the molar masses and then you could kind of match it back to the sample calculation that you did. This is what your titration would look like over time. You'll see some of this in the video, but it's nice to have a picture of it. Before the titration, your solution would have no color. Okay. And then as you reach the end point, you'd start to see that pink color um, persist longer and longer in that solution. And your end point will be the first drop that you add that turns it from this clear color to any persistent pink color that stays. But it has to be a one drop um, situation. So you would literally have a clear solution, then you would add one drop, and then it would turn pink. Okay, you do not want to add any more than one drop to make that color change happen, because then you have gone past the endpoint and you've over titrated. Okay, and then you would need to back titrate to fix that. Um, just some important procedure points to keep in mind. We started this experiment by standardizing our NaOH solution. Um, we did this because we made the NaOH solution ourselves, so we don't know what the molarity of it would be. We could have um, a good guess as to what it should be around based on the volumes that we added, but we would want to check that um, by standardizing it to a, a particular number of significant figures before we started our actual unknown solid titration. Okay, um, and that's that's what we're doing here. We used our standardized NaOH to evaluate the unknown acid um, because, you know, it's kind of fun. I don't know. <laughs> Why not? Um, to get a good set of results for this lab, uh, the two things that are most important are your accurate burette readings, okay, and your accurate mass measurements. Um, so you have to remember that when you're reading the burettes, you're reading them to two decimal places and you're reading exactly what the burette says. You're not trying to do any kind of math in your head when you're taking a burette reading. You just read what the burette says. Uh, and then to find the volume that you use, it's the final uh, minus the initial reading. All right. And um, pay attention to your significant figures as you're going through your data and calculation sheet you can always go back to this video and see how we did our significant figures when you're trying to figure out the significant figures on your own data and calculation sheet. Okay, look at the decisions that we made in this video when you're doing the ASA and then use those decisions to help you make yours when you're doing your data and calculation sheet.